guys, this is Amika and I'll be talking to you about the heart today. Um, so, you know, as much as biology may sound boring otherwise, the heart is actually a pretty interesting part of uh, the circulatory system. It's the main pumping organ of our body, the pumping station. And uh, I mean, undoubtedly one of the most important organs in the body, right? So when we talk about the heart, we generally tend to uh, touch the left side of our chest. Now this is because the heart is uh, located in the center of the chest cavity, but it's a little tilted towards the left side. And uh, your heart is essentially the size of your fist. So that's the size of my heart. And for the average adult, it's about 12 centimeters in length and nine centimeters in width, the size of the heart. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the internal structure of the heart a little bit. So let me just share my screen and I will show you what I'm talking about. That's what the internal structure roughly looks like. I have a not so great diagram, uh, don't mind my drawing abilities, but otherwise that's roughly what it looks like. Now the heart in itself is protected by a double layered membrane and uh, the fluid that fills the two membranes is called the pericardial fluid. So if I were to just represent that once and show you, if this is the heart it's protected by the double layered membrane or the pericardium and the fluid that fills this this fluid is essentially the pericardial fluid okay now without further ado let's talk about the internal structure of the heart and this is where we'll cover things like what are the sounds made during a heartbeat what happens during a heart attack what happens during a silent heart attack a lot of cool stuff okay Let's talk about the internal structure of the heart. Now, um, as you can see, I've labeled the various parts with numbers. So we'll come to each label or we'll try to cover like the majority of it. Now, what you need to know right in the beginning is that the heart has four chambers. All right. There's the upper two chambers and the lower two chambers. So if I were to show that to you in terms of this particular diagram, then the upper two chambers are number nine and number 10 and then the lower two chambers is the uh, labeling six and four so now let's look at nine and ten right these are the upper two chambers of the heart and these are essentially called the auricles or the atria and when we come to six and four that's the ventricles or the lower chambers of the heart in fact what's interesting to note is that the ventricles have thicker walls as compared to the atria and that's because the ventricles are required to uh, pump blood to all other parts of the body including your brain which means that in that case the blood would be flowing against gravity right in order to reach uh, your brain or the upper part of the body and the, that's the responsibility of the ventricles to pump blood it's which is why it's more elastic and it's got thicker walls so if I were to write that down as a characteristic, this is called thicker walls. And obviously the atria has thicker ones. Now, when we're talking about the heart, right? And when we draw the heart, it's important to understand that um, your right and left is completely flipped when you're drawing the heart. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this essentially becomes the left auricle and the left ventricle and uh, these two become as you can rightfully guess the right auricle and the right ventricle. So it gets flipped while you're actually while you're drawing the heart in particular. Now we come to um, the sounds made in the heart right. The sounds made in the heart is the lub sound and the dub sound. Now the lub sound takes place when the tricuspid and the uh, bicuspid valves are closing whereas the dub sound takes place when the uh, semilunar valves are closing. Now you may just wonder like how did that randomly come up? It, it's not random, I'll tell you why because I'll point out the valves to you now when I'm drawing. Okay, the tricuspid uh, valve is essentially where you can see labeling 7. So I know I saw the nice, most nicely written seven, but that's the tricuspid valve. And the bicuspid valve is number three. 
and there is the uh, then we talked about the semi lunar valves right so the pulmonary semi lunar valve is number 8 and the aortic semi lunar valve is number 5 right so let's talk about these valves and what do they do right uh, so let's begin with the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve which is 7 and 3 now remember the bicuspid valve is also called the mitral valve and as you can see from the diagram it's located between the auricle and the ventricle so the tricuspid valve is located between the right auricle and the right ventricle and similarly the bicuspid valve is located in the aperture between the left auricle and the left ventricle right now these uh, valves are held in place by chordae tendineae because the valves are like revolving doors so you need something to hold it in position now um what is the purpose of these valves these valves essentially regulate the flow of blood so the blood only flows from the auricles to the ventricles and doesn't flow backwards right so let me just um show you with blue for the right auricle to the right ventricle that's the flow of blood in that direction and when you talk about um the left auricle and the left ventricle this is the flow of blood and i'll explain to you in a minute why i've used the colors i have so yeah and then we come to number 8 and number 5 now number 8 is the pulmonary semi lunar valve as you can see it looks like a slightly badly drawn but half moon and we talk about number uh, we talk about number 5 which is the aortic semi lunar valve so let's write that down the function of the pulmonary and aortic semi lunar valve is very similar so what they essentially do now coming to let if we talk specifically about the pulmonary a uh, semi lunar valve it ensures the flow of blood from uh, the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery in turn carries the deoxygenated blood which is that's why it's indicated with a blue arrow carries the deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation and what does the aortic semi lunar valve do the aortic semi lunar valve essentially ensures the flow of blood from the left ventricle um into the aorta and the aorta in turn carries the oxygenated blood to all other parts of the body now how that happens i'll come to that that's the reason the red arrow was marked so uh, here's the little tip you should know left uh, blue color is for deoxygenated blood and red color is when oxygenated blood is being carried the pulmonary artery with reference to this diagram is the first labeling so where the one has been marked and number 11 is the aorta so let's draw let's just write that down now the aorta has certain branches so the aorta splits into the coronary arteries these are essentially the coronary arteries if i were to put a little bit of a pen mark in them now the coronary arteries have a very interesting function to play because when there is a blockage in the coronary artery by any chance if there's a blockage in the coronary artery due to say if you have like 5000 packets of cheetos that's probably what's going to happen um and that blockage tends to deaden the uh, the surrounding cells of the heart muscle of the of the walls of the heart muscle so if i were to show you if this is where the blockage takes place right it causes a deadening in the uh cells uh, of the wall of the surrounding heart muscle and uh, in turn that causes the myocardial infarction or the heart attack in other words so let's put this as a little bit bracket here so now you know what causes a heart attack and the scientific term for a silent heart attack is essentially a gyna pectoris yes i know scientific terms are not the most pleasant thing but we got to know that let's talk about how this blood enters the heart right we've all we've talked about how the blood is leaving the heart in terms of the pulmonary artery and the aorta but how does it enter the heart so the blood vessels that enter the heart are essentially number 12 and number 13 number 12 is the superior vena superior vena cava the superior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the upper parts of the body and the inferior vena cava which is number 13 carries blood from the lower parts of the body that is the abdomen the legs and that's where the deoxygenated blood enters now if you look at the diagram carefully the deoxygenated blood are uh, entering from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava is pouring into the right auricle so that is where the deoxygenated blood 
is collected in the heart and we talked about the color blue earlier right so i'm just going to use um blue here as well because it carries the oxygenated blood which enters the right auricle now from the right auricle this deoxygenated blood passes to the right ventricle through like we talked about earlier the uh, tricuspid valve and from the right ventricle it opens into the uh, pulmonary artery again we talked about this through the um, pulmonary semilunar valves and from the pulmonary artery it goes to the lungs for oxygenation from the lungs it enters the left auricle so all the oxygenated blood in the body enters the left auricle from the left auricle it passes through the bicuspid valve which we were talking about and enters the left ventricle and as we talked about this too from the left ventricle it goes to the aorta which pumps the blood to all other parts of the body and that's the blood we can use because it's oxygenated blood right so now what is this entire complex red blue drawings that i showed you this is essentially the circulation of blood in the heart and the body and the lungs but how do we divide that and how does that take how does that take place i'll come to that so this is the reason why uh our heart is known to our body rather is known to have double circulation of blood so the first round of circulation i told you right so it's double circulation the first round of circulation is the pulmonary circulation this pulmonary circulation takes place between the lungs and the heart because remember the heart is sending the oxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation and again it's entering the heart so that's the first round of circulation of blood that takes place which is known as the pulmonary circulation and the second round of circulation of blood that takes place is the um systemic or the major circulation so let's just talk about that this is actually the primary circulation that takes place the systemic or the major circulation is between the heart and all other parts of the body so remember once the oxygenated blood is being poured into the heart it is the aorta that takes that same oxygenated blood to all other parts of the body hence it's the that is the major round of circulation because it's being pumped to all other body parts and organs so that's how the double circulation of the blood takes place now earlier we talked about the sounds that were made during a heartbeat right so let's just reiterate that because now we know what the valves do and what their function is so there are essentially two sounds made during heartbeat a is the lub sound it it kind of sounds like l u b d like a lub and the second sound that's made is a dub sound which is i think it's a single b sorry my bad yeah single beat this takes place when the tricuspid and the mitral valve or the bicuspid valves close so that would be um i think we marked the labelings before that would be number 7 and number 3 all right and the dub sound takes place when the semilunar valves close semilunar valves includes aortic valve as well as pulmonary valves and that is in this case for this diagram it's number 8 and number 5 now when um let's talk about the chambers a little more closely once when the uh, chambers are the chambers are, as in the auricles and the ventricles or uh, if the auricles contract the ventricles will relax if the ventricles contract the auricles will relax they have relax they have like an alternative movement and uh, con contraction is called systole and uh, relaxation is called diastole so let's just write that down come to think of it it's pretty interesting right how the heart is designed such that um all four chambers are serving different fun functions or doing different things at the same time and uh, how the circulation of blood takes place in our body and imagine this is happening like one full heartbeat happens every 0.85 seconds as you're talking this is the entire circulation of blood and the entire cardiac cycle that's being completed to uh, to you know feel a heartbeat and then there's these lub and dub sounds that's made during a heartbeat so that's definitely uh, one of the most interesting parts of the circulatory system which is the heart and this is roughly what we've covered for today
I I know that not all of it is on the screen, but if you uh, follow the arrows, hopefully I've done them well, and the colors you'll get a hang of it. Right. So that's with regard to the heart and what happens during a heart attack. I'll just re- repeat that. So the biological term for heart attack is myocardial infarction, and the biological term for a silent heart attack is a giant affectoris. And now you know exactly why it happens. So yeah, that's that. And thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for you today.